Hello everybody and welcome back to 3DF, my name is Xander, and today we're going to be talking about a very special material called Acrylonitrile Butadine Styrene, also known as ABS. Over the course of today's episode, we're going to talk about things like what is ABS, for the benefits, shortcomings, optimal print settings, troubleshooting, how do you make slurry, what is slurry? So let's get right into it. So what is ABS? ABS is a thermoplastic and amorphous polymer and therefore has no true melting point. ABS is made by polymerizing styrene and acrylonitrile in the presence of polybutadiene. ABS was discovered in 1907 by the Borg Warner Corporation and it was patented in 1948, hitting the commercial market in 1954. ABS is made up of three constituent parts, acrylonitrile, a synthetic monomer produced by propylene and ammonia, butadiene, a petroleum hydrocarbon isolated with steam cracking, and styrene, a monomer made by dehydrogenation of ethyl benzene. The chemical formula for ABS is C8H8, C4H6, C3H3N. And now let's talk about the properties of ABS. So first of all, melting temperature. Unlike most FDM plastics, ABS does not have a specific melting temperature, and this is due to the fact that each one of the constituent parts, the acrylonitrile, butadiene, and styrene, all have their own individual melting temperature. Uh, and this makes it a little less fluid to try and determine an overall melting temperature. And we're going to get into a bit more of that when we talk about warpage. Uh, its density is 1.060 to 1.080 grams per cubic centimeter. Tensile strength is 46 megapascals, flex reel strength 74 megapascals, and on average it shrinks 0.5 to 0.7%, which represents about 5 to 7 thousandths of an inch. In the current market, there are a variety of ABS materials available, although they usually fall under the banner of just ABS. So the first thing to consider when you're purchasing ABS is that you could be buying an ABS that's high in styrene, high in acrylonitrile, or a good balance there for them. But they break down into a couple of basic groups. Um, general purpose, low gloss, high gloss, high impact, high flow, and platable, meaning metal platable. On average, ABS tends to be 15 to 35 percent acrylonitrile, 5 to 30 percent butadiene, and 40 to 60 percent styrene. Now let's get into some of the benefits of ABS. So first of all, it's low cost. ABS is mass produced for a wide variety of applications, including automotive, aerospace, consumer products, electronics, and all that good jazz. ABS has good heat resistance and can absorb a large amount of heat before de deformation, warping, or failure. It also has good weather resistance due to the strength of ABS. It can survive in almost any weather condition, although it will lose color in direct sunlight. Impact resistance. ABS, it can take a hit and it will hold its form. Chemically smoothable. Uh, ABS can be chemically smoothed with acetone. And of course, ABS is recyclable in most areas. And now onto the shortcomings of ABS. ABS has poor chemical resistance due to the chemical properties of the different constituent parts and how they interact with a wide variety of different chemicals. ABS is prone to warping, shrinkage, and distortion, and this is due to the cooling temperature of each of the different parts of ABS and can lead to poor bed adhesion, uh, cracking, shearing, poor layer lamination, and a wide variety of other 3D printing issues. ABS has a very pugnant chemical order and should always be printed in an open air space or a space that's properly ventilated. In addition, there's also the risk of UFPs or ultrafine particles in the air, uh, which can get into your lungs. Now, further research is needed to determine the danger of these UFPs, but overall, you're probably going to want to avoid that. And then finally, we have photosensitivity. So over time and exposure to sunlight, uh, ABS will bleach out its color first and then slowly begin to degrade over time. And on to the optimal print settings for ABS. So first of all, you're gonna want a hot end temperature of 220 to 250 degrees Celsius. When it comes to ABS, table heating is a must and should be between 95 and 110 degrees Celsius. ABS also really prefers an enclosure. This is going to stop your part from uh, cooling unequally, and we recommend that around 50 to 70 degrees Celsius. Now, when it comes down to cooling fans and ABS, there's a lot of contention and debate about how you should use a, a cooling fan. I say if you're bridging, go up to 25% on your cooling fan. If you're not bridging, less is more. 
recommended build surfaces. So you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna print either on some sort of build tag, captain tape, or uh, PET tape. And you're still gonna have problems with adhesion with that, so you're probably gonna wanna use an ABS slurry, glue, or juice. So what is ABS slurry? Well, ABS slurry is a chemical paste that can be applied to the build plate to help uh, ABS adhere to the table or to help fill holes or coat your products. Um, and it breaks down into three different groups, slurry, juice, and glue. So for each of these recipes, you'll need a resealable chemical resistant container. We usually just use mason jars. It's easy, glass, very chemically resistant, nice lid. Everything's good there. You're gonna need a stirring mechanism like a popsicle stick or a paintbrush, usually works really nice. Uh, some ABS filament and some acetone. Now keep in mind, acetone is a very powerful chemical and you should always be using that safely. Wear gloves, wear safety glasses, you know, PPE that up. So for juice, you're gonna want four grams of filament to 50 millimeters of acetone. And this is great for coating your table for small prints to get better adhesion. Then we have glue, which is eight grams of filament to 50 milliliters of acetone. And it's great for connecting ABS parts together. Uh, you know, glue, right? And then finally we have slurry, which is 20 grams of filament to 50 milliliters of acetone. And this is really good for filling holes and cracks in ABS prints, or when you're doing a big print and you need to make sure that that sticks to the table. And now let's talk about troubleshooting ABS issues. So the first issue we're gonna talk about today is warping and distortion. Um, so if you try and cool ABS too quickly, the internal stress from the rapid cooling will cause major damage to your part, uh, including poor adhesion, cracking, and splits and layers. So the best solution for this is to minimize your fan speed or even turn it off in some instances and to keep your ABS print in an enclosure that is thermally controlled. Now these enclosures can be quite basic. Um, we've definitely retrofitted some of our machines with some in the past that were uh, barely better than just an acrylic enclosure, allowing the table and the nozzle heat to really heat the environment. If you do that, do yourself a favor, get a little thermometer to put in there. So that way you know that your part's already hot enough when you go to when you go to print and your, your environment's hot enough. So that way you don't deal with any immediate cold start cooling issues. And finally, we're gonna talk about lifting and bed adhesion. Now we have touched on this earlier in the video when we talked about some of the shortcomings and how to make uh, ABS slurry. So obviously the first answer to that is use ABS slurry, but ABS slurry is messy, sticky, it's very hard to get off, and um, I don't wanna say will ruin your build plate, uh, but over time we'll begin to take strips out of your build plate and if you're planning on doing a lot of printing as most people are That's not very much fun. Also ABS slurry and glass plates don't go very well together And you can actually break out entire pieces of your glass plate while pulling off your part um, So when using a glass plate, you're gonna want to use a glue stick just your regular white glue stick like you had in primary school uh, with a little bit of water and really coat the whole top. You wanna you wanna see it caked. It should be kind of whitish, uh, with ridges and everything else. Now, we have found uh, that when using glue stick, if it dries out before the first layer is complete, you're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna have peeling in those areas because it won't properly adhere into the build plate. So we usually use a temperature of 55 to 60 degrees Celsius for the first pass uh, with the fan off entirely to allow the ABS to really, really come out as hot as possible and sink in. In addition, when you're using PET tape as an alternative, uh, we uh, suggest abrading the glass sheet that it's on top of first uh, with a 600 or 800 grit sandpaper, then the PET tape, which will actually fall into some of those pores as you lay it out, allowing for little gaps for the ABS to push into and get anchored into the table. All right, so that wraps up our troubleshooting on ABS. Final notes, essentially ABS, good material, has to be for the right application, tough to stick, make sure you have good ventilation. Uh, if you're brand new to 3D printing, don't recommend ABS as a good one to start. You will definitely become frustrated. It takes a little bit of time and, and practice and discipline and playing around with your machine to get it to work properly. If you're brand new, check out PLA. It is the easiest material to print and we have an attachment to our video on that up here. Uh, next week, Other Xander will be doing a episode on G-Code programming, G00, G01, G02. And in the following week, I will be talking about PETG, the serious contender of ABS. So. <laughs>
Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, check out our other videos, check out our website, come see us, and we will see you again soon.